Sorry we are late. We did it again. Zeb had it set to a private live, but we fixed it. We're public now and we're excited to be working on this project. This is a jewelry box. Zeb's going to find the picture of what it looks like. Yep. Uh, the beforehand, it was just black. And we did a coat of white swan just sprayed on just to give us a base coat to get started with here. It was really shiny, so we like sanded it lightly and sprayed it. And it's not real wood, so it's like a little bit hard to blend on. So we wanted a good base. Oh, of course my before pictures are on the okay. phone we're doing the video with. Oh, well, we'll show you the before picture in community. Later. It was black. It was black. Picture this, but black. Now we've got a base coat of white swan on there. And originally we, the, we saw this idea in the Jamie Ray Vintage group on Facebook. If you haven't joined, be sure to join the Jamie Ray Vintage group. It's got lots of great ideas, much better than all of mine because it comes from a collective of over 10,000 people in the group share projects and ideas. So it's really fun. Who did this idea come from? What was her name? Angie Roenstad. I believe that's maybe <laughs> Roenstad. <laughs> Um, Angie, did Angie. This. she did a the jewelry box and hers was prettier. It looked like an armoire, but it was just a little tiny jewelry box. And so we're going to do some paint blending, some stamping while the paint's drying. We're going to be doing some milk painting. So we got a lot going on. Thank you for joining us today. If you're new to our channel, um, we do DIYs, farmhouse, help people grow their business if they do painted furniture or boutiques. And we have a website, jamierayvintage.com, and that's where you can get the paint we're using. Are you going French millinery first? Yeah, so I think farm fresh first, and then we're going to oh, blend in fresh. some French millinery. So we're starting with white swan. Um, let me go get a flat brush to get the base coat on. Um, I have... No, I had... Oh, Deb, you totally dropped, somehow I know. dropped milk tape. I know. I know, I know, I know it's spilled. Well, clean it up. I will in a minute. I know I spilled it, but it, milk paint doesn't come off very easy. It'll be all right. Zeb spilled milk paint right there. I was in a rush trying to get the second video going and bumped it with my elbow. Oh, that's okay. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a base of this Farm Fresh on here. Zeb, you want to answer questions? Yep, yeah, everybody's saying hi. Hello, hi. everyone. Some people catching us for the first time live. That's awesome. We love doing these live videos. They're fun. They're interactive. Sometimes they go a little long, but we usually dump a ton of information out there for you. Yeah, so stay tuned. You never know when an information nugget is coming. Well, we like to answer questions in real time. People have uh, questions and things about what we're doing or a project they're working on, and we like to help them troubleshoot it too. If you're a member of our paint channel subscriber group, let me know if you guys watched our video yesterday. We did a video all about our tips and tricks for Facebook. We're doing a series on social media. I can't even talk. Social media for our paid channel members. And we included all the behind the scenes things that we get asked all the time. And just kind of what we've done to grow our page. I know everybody's a little bit different. We're definitely not gurus, but we've grown our page pretty well in the last few years. So it's been a fun thing. And guess what guys, we painted the back on this. So we do have a question. Tammy Marco says, Zeb, I'm having a hard time cleaning the DIY paint off my brushes. Any tips? Hot water works. Um, brush soap? We use, so... I don't think we have any brush soap. I just ran out. So we use a charcoal soap on them to condition them, but I just have this scrubby brush. We get ours at Ikea. I think they're like a dollar, two dollars, something like that. And I just run these through the bristles under hot water until I get clear and it works really well. And you're not going to ruin the brush or anything. This is just plastic or I don't even know. It's plastic. Um, and it works great and it gets your brush really clean too. Yeah. And the charcoal soap really helps condition and clean it. We usually use warm water first and scrub it and then we use the charcoal soap to get out the rest. And we're probably not the best to talk about brush care because we're we abuse our brushes and if they're really bad we soak them in downy chris uh chris said she watched the video and she learned not to crop your husband out crop your husband <laughs> of your out. thumbnail picture yeah if your husband works with you leave him in the picture if he doesn't work with you make sure that your profile picture is just you not one that's cropped out and looks funny people that didn't watch the video might not understand the context of that one All right, I'm just getting this on here. Sally said she watched, was filled with great information, and then she All dropped right. a bunch of emojis like she loves Aww, to do. Oh, Sally, we love you. We're having so much fun with the channel member group. It allows us to make longer, more detailed videos, because what we put on YouTube has to be for like the general public. 
and not everybody's interested in a 22 minute video on Facebook, but the people in our paid membership group usually love the long videos. All right, farm fresh done. Okay. We're going to come bring in some French millinery. Not waiting for it to dry, we're blending, right? Are you using the, no, the little Frenchy? Um, or? Yeah, I think I will, and then I'll blend it with that brush. So, so French millinery is kind of a see, lavender color. Can you see this? It's getting kind of dark in here. Yeah, I know. Coming in. We got clouds today. Yeah, they can see you good, what you're doing. Can I have it back though so I can Yeah, I'll let you dip in a sec. I just wanted to show them up close. Ooh, try not to drip. But it's really fun lavender. When it dries, it's kind of, uh, it's not quite that deep. Yeah, it dries a little bit. It dries a little lighter. lighter and we're that. gonna, of course, gonna be adding some white back on here. And I'm just playing. I don't really have a plan. People said, somebody said the other day that paint blending was really hard. And I was like, I think if you are a perfectionist, it probably could be. So now that I've got this on here, I'm gonna come just blend it with this brush that already has the Farm Fresh on it. And that's gonna help blend it together. It's gonna look like a mess for a little bit. Most blended finishes do. And then when you start layering back in again, that's when they get better. Yeah, it has to, has to get bad before it gets good. Kai Hendren says, I just chalk painted my first piece yesterday. I'm distressing now and will clear wax. You two inspired me and I love the chalk paint. So easy to work with. Awesome. Awesome. It's always great when your first project goes as planned. That's yeah. great. Sometimes it, it has a mind of its own. So I'm coming back with this brush because it does have some of that farm fresh on it. And it's just helping blend this. The thing with blending too is you don't want to push too hard because then you get through the paint to like the base coat or especially this piece is like MDF and super shiny. Mary L, I will drop a link in yesterday's video. I'll drop a link in that video so that you can find the editing video that we did for channel members back in January. That way you can, was it January? Yeah, um, that yeah. way you can find that video easy. We've only been doing this a couple months. So there's, we do one live and one edited video for channel members every month. Okay, we're getting there. Cindy Grotto asks, I love watching you all. I have a booth, but would love to do better. How do you all stay encouraged when sales are slow? The storm between, the, the, the slow storm of furniture sales between like, I would say end of November to end of February can be tough. We usually try to prepare for it by, by saving the boom that we have in the summer. We try to save a little nest. Spring and tax that. returns are coming, people. Yep. Spring, spring and summer are always busy. It's almost like a tidal wave coming after what we have during the winter sometimes. But that's my best suggestion. If you're not able to do that, uh, just keep on going. Um, storage stuff sells good after January because everybody's trying to reorganize their lives. And pull and stuff out and put new stuff in even yeah. if you haven't sold it. Just to keep your space looking fresh and then bring Rotate that old it stuff. around. Bring that old stuff back in later. So I'm just using just water in this squirt bottle. It's gonna help blend it a little and I don't want to hose it down. I couldn't find my mister. All right. We're we, gonna We tried in a rush to find the mister and didn't didn't find it this morning. Maybe that's when the paint got spilled. <laughs> can you can I you clean up that milk that paint up. That'd be great. I know we're live, but you got I have a few white spots that I'm just blending here. All right. Sorry. Oh. And you probably will see that um, some black coming through, and we don't mind that. We wanted a layered effect, and this originally was black. Lynn, Lynn oh. Justice says, uh, she loved the video last night. So much helpful information. We're glad. That's our goal is to help you guys grow your business and kind of learn from what we've learned in hopes that you won't, because there wasn't a lot, there's not a lot of self-help on out there on how to run a furniture flipping business. So well, we're trying to, weird. we're trying to consolidate that. And hopefully the, the things we're telling you guys are helping. We're trying to get the most critical things first for the channel members and then we'll work in some other things as we go through the year. Yeah. All right, so we're going to let this sit for a hot minute and dry a little bit. And then let's get these with milk paint. Will you grab me that milk paint over there? So sometimes you have to let it sit and dry. Otherwise, especially in this case where it was really shiny, I don't want it to be so wet because if I brush against it, I'm gonna pull that paint off. Can you give me the milk paint? So Pam Ship asks, why don't you use a large turntable so you can turn the small pieces like this one or to show us and make it easier to paint? 
because we're not organized. I was going to say that same thing. We're not that organized. We usually just wing these live videos. <laughs> Shut up. Seriously, this mess is huge. You need to clean it, sweetie. All right, I'll wipe it I'm up in a second. I'm trying to be nice about it, but you need to clean up your mess. I'll wipe it up, whether now or later. I'll still no, just be the one the, cleaning No, just use the brush and scoop some paint up. It's like <laughs> half of my milk paint. Oh, you need it. You need it. Got I that. need that paint, so scoop it into here. All right. All right, so the next project we have is fork and spoon, and Zeb's going to put the camera down in a second. They're kind of tribal looking. <laughs> These will go in the shop. They've been hanging out in the garage for a while. They were a little greasy, so hopefully the milk paint doesn't all chip off, but they're raw wood, so I think that it'll adhere pretty I well. I just washed them with Dawn and hot water, so we'll see what happens. Cut the grease. There you go. There's a few drops more paint for you. Where? Oh. In the jar. Where's the brush that you did that with? Okay. So I'm going to start on the back side here. So you didn't add any extra bond or anything to that, right? Nope. This is just sweet water milk paint, which is kind of a white. It looks white. Trip here, I'll bring the camera down so you guys can see what she's doing close here. This is a powder. And I stood it up with no bond, so we'll see if it chips. I don't know. And it'll probably take two coats for full coverage. It may look white, but it's got a green hue to it. It's very soft. I like to do lighter colors on a piece that's dark like this because then it contrasts well when I distress it. Okay, so we're gonna flip, flip it over. I know you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's still wet. I don't care. I'm gonna distress it anyways. And so, it's gonna go hang on the wall. Mindy Meekins, um, we covered running a booth space in our last live video, that link can be found in community for it's in a members only post. And it was all about running a booth, what you should pay, how to organize it, set it up, the software we use to keep track of inventory, all that stuff. Yeah, all in there. It was a fun video and we've had a ton of good response from that. If you have no idea what we're talking about with channel membership, I'll just fill you in. We have a channel membership in the US. It's $4.99, different countries vary. It includes one extra live video, one extra edited video, a free printable from Seb, and a chapter of our book, plus emojis and a bird that changes colors the longer you're a member. So if you see birds, those are our channel members. It's a fun little group that we started just to add some extra stuff. And our goal is that if we get a thousand channel members, which right now we're at like 400 something, that we can hire somebody to edit our videos and we can create more content across the board. So we're excited. And maybe sleep every now and then. Karen Roberts <laughs> says it's nice and warm and sunny over in the UK, which is awesome. She's been painting. Oh, been that's painting great. lots of things. We're almost, we've been having snowstorms all week last week, but it's been in the 40s this week and Up it's all melted off. Up to 50 a few days. It's kind of overcast day, so we'll see what it does. If it does snow, it won't stick. But we're almost having warm enough weather that we can pull everything out of the garage and have a spray day. Okay. Flip that over. Paint the front. Yeah, Chris, we don't usually go for these forks and spoons. I think this is actually the first one we've ever thrifted. No, I've, I've painted them and they sell. Have you? Yes. I've never seen, this has kind of a tribal Well, this is tribal. Too. This is a little different than normal. I've never seen you do a fork and spoon like this. I have had forks and spoons though. You just never know who wants a fork and a spoon. It reminds me of, have you ever watched every, well, I know Zeb has, but have you guys ever watched Everybody Loves Raymond? She has a giant fork and spoon on her wall. <laughs> Marie does. So Mary Moonen asks, question, I am having a barn door custom made for me. They cannot stain it in weathered gray. Can I white wax it after it has been stained and sealed? to achieve a lighter weathered gray. It will not blend as well if it's already been sealed, so. But you can do it. You might just have to, when you wipe it, it more is going to come off if it's already been sealed, but yeah. it won't blend it in. It depends on what they seal it with. The shinier it is, the harder it's gonna be, so. It's hard for us to tell you exactly because every product is different, so I don't know what they're using on it, but I think it would help. Try an inconspicuous area first. All right, fork and spoon, first coated done. Still drying over here on this blue-green situation. So, Renee Shun, how do we call those nice wooden shelf support thingies? Uh, the corbels? Corbels? The corbels that I make? Are you talking about the ones we have on the website? Not sure. Yeah. 
That's what she's talking about. All right, you want to flip that camera up and we'll yep. paint We'll these. come back up. We're going to do some candlesticks now. Jamie's doing all the painting today. Zeb is sick. I'm, I'm holding out. We're going to do some stamping if this will dry fast enough. It should. You may have to take it outside and blow dry it, but I need to come back with some white. Okay, you get your white ready to go. And then I'll go blow dry it for a minute. So it doesn't candlesticks take long. are big sellers in the shop. Um, especially when they're painted white. We've got a couple in there right now, but we could use a few more. These candlesticks, I think originally we bought for like three bucks and they're big enough that we'll probably sell them for about 14 or $15 for this size. And this is something that if it was warm outside, we would just spray. So smalls are definitely easier when it's warm because we'll just set up a bunch of them and spray them all in a row. Which we can spray in the garage right now. It's just kind of packed full of stuff. I don't know how that happened. Where did all that stuff come from that's in the garage there? We go get more every week. Yeah. Just looking through comments here. Okay. So I'm using DIY White Swan. This is the first coat. First coat's a tack coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. Stephanie Prairie asks, can you use a polyacrylic silver over milk paint or does milk paint seal itself? Milk paint's porous. You're going to want to seal it. If it's really chippy, you don't want to use a liquid sealer over the top of it because it's going to reactivate it and make it even more chippy. Sometimes the whole, whole like, like the side of this could all just flake off if it were milk painted and we did a liquid sealer and it was really chippy and crackly. If it's not really chippy and crackly, if you use, let's say, um, bond in it, then yeah, you can spray it with a liquid sealer or brush it on and it's going to be fine. We typically use oil wax or just like a regular... Uh, kind of like a creamy wax to clear. seal. Just a clear wax, not a creamy, yeah. like a soft. Well, like I'm talking texture. Soft. <laughs> but yeah, we clear wax most of our milk painted stuff. So, and it's durable. You Sometimes you got to do two, three coats to and, and do some good buffing, but. Once that milk paint cures, you're pretty good anyways. Yeah, it, it likes to stick on there once it's done chipping. Whatever doesn't chip off, once it's done chipping, it ain't coming off. So, Tammy this Odell. This is vintage linen. This isn't white swan. The milk paint color is... Sweet water. Sweet water. All I right. wanted to call it Windy Day for whatever reason. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand this off to you. Can you take it's this? It's sweet water, not Windy Day. All right, I'm going to go do some... Are you going to paint this? Yeah, I need you to blow dry it so I can do some white. Oh, don't touch that. Okay, I'm gonna go blow dry this out in the garage real quick. Not necessarily, it's fine, I'm gonna leave it. Not necessarily <coughs> recommended to blow dry your piece. It's better to just let it air dry, but we're going to do that so that we You're can- You're gonna touch the sweet water in any second. So that we can finish <laughs> this. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna answer questions while that blow dries. I, I am feeling better, but I'm still a little sick. I feel like live videos when I'm sick is like a three ring circus. Hold on, let me grab some water here. Stacy, that's so funny. She says the big fork and spoon remind me of an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond. I just mentioned that because it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, she has Marie has a big fork and spoon on her wall. That show's hilarious. Have I ever used a color suitcase, Lisa? I have not used it except for to water it down and make a faux stain out of it. Blow drying is always a joy, Maddox says. Yeah, we have to do that a lot. In fact, Yesterday, um, so I, I got LASIK from Hoops Vision in like September and I negotiated a deal with them. I'm working on a commercial for them talking about my LASIK. And so yesterday, part of the commercial, the B-roll, which B-roll means like what they play over the top of me talking, is me painting a project from kind of start to finish, taking it to the shop. It was really fun, especially to have like a professional videographer. But we had to bust out the blow dryer yesterday because he did not have time to wait for it to dry. So the blow dryer came out many times yesterday while we were finishing up our piece. Let's see, can you use DIY paint on outdoor furniture? Yeah, absolutely. If you use DIY paint on outdoor furniture, be sure to use a water-based sealer that's made for outdoor furniture. If you have a, a spray gun, you could just spray it on. Most importantly, it's what you seal it with that's gonna protect it. Um, Debbie from DIY Paint, the gal that makes this paint, actually painted the, Sorry, my nose is running. I um, actually painted the front of her store with DIY paint and never sealed it. And once the clay hardened, it got a really great patina on it and it's really pretty. I have a curio cabinet that has an oil-based stain finish. Tried, tired of it. Can I just paint over it with DIY 
prep, do what do I need to do? Um, as long as the stain is cured and sealed, you can just go ahead and paint over it with DIY paint. Stain that's oil-based needs to dry at least 24 hours and then be sealed, and then you can paint over it with whatever you want. Have I ever painted over a trunk or old footlocker? Yeah, I've dry brushed them for a few times. I like old trunks, they're fun. Okay, Let's see. Denise says she's had the same type of cold that's lasted forever. Yeah, it's going on and on, but I feel better. Renee says my son has eat hanging with their spoon, spoon and fork. I have seen that. Let's see. Have you used Minwax polyacrylic? If so, do you know if it yellows over DIY paint? So Minwax polyacrylic I used to use all the time. I don't use it anymore because it's not all natural. Um, but the only way it's going to yellow is if you spray it on too thick or if you have bleed through. And that's going to happen with any um, sealer. You just need to have shellac, spray it over the areas that are yellow, repaint, and seal. Um, I have not specifically used Minwax polyacrylic over it. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I, it's been a minute. My kitchen cabinets. So these are, because it was such a big project, I believe I sealed this with satin polyacrylic because I wanted more of a sheen than big top. And they didn't yellow. They're fine. We did have bleed through though, so make sure to have shellac candy. Do I like the paint sprayer from Harbor Tools? Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it because it's cheap and if I ruin it, I don't feel so bad throwing it away. We go through a lot of paint sprayers and we're not super good at cleaning them, so. All right, let's see. Lynn says, channel membership is the best $5 I've ever spent. Thank you. We are trying to really bring value because I know that a lot of people have like business coaching and there's a lot of monthly subscriptions out there that cost $25, $35, $50 a month to be part of. But we felt like $5 was a small enough amount that hopefully most people could afford it, even though not everybody can. And we also wanted to make sure that you got a value for your money and got something out of it. So I appreciate that. Chris, are you guys still planning on moving to California? Eventually, yes, someday. That is the short to the long answer. We will be wherever God wants us to be whenever God puts us there. But that is where I want to live. We're kind of at a what are we going to do when right now situation. So... All right, how did your suitcase painting turn out, Brie? Oh, I don't know the answer to that question. That's for Brie. Okay, let's see. What can I do to my piece if the milk paint chipped in large sections? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sand that section down, and then I would actually spray a coat of shellac because it's possible there's something causing it not to adhere. I know shellac sometimes makes it chip, but if you just put shellac on there and let it dry completely after after you've sanded that area smooth it should seal in whatever was causing the resist to the milk paint and then come back with milk paint with bond on it and paint an entire section try not to leave areas like feather it in to where the other paint is because if you just paint just a spot sometimes it'll look splotchy so make sure that you blend it really well and that should solve that problem um do, 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 do. let's see if we've got any other questions how much will one pint of milk paint paint? That's like a tongue tie. How much, if a milk paint could paint, milk paint paint? Um, that's Sally's question. A pint should cover a dresser, average sized, not a large one. And if you're going white, just know that it takes three to four coats of milk paint to cover in any of the white shades. But in any of the colored shades, a pint is more than enough to do at least one dresser. Maybe a dresser and a little side table, depending on how dark it is. The darker, like the navy and the blacks cover super good, and you're going to get way more out of it as opposed to the lighter colors. Oh, we got a new member, Tammy Odell. Welcome, Tammy. If you have questions with your membership, you can always email uh, customercare at jamierayvintage.com. Caitlin is awesome, and she will try uh, to help you however she can. There's some things we can't control because it is ran through YouTube, but we have some tips and tricks if you've got, you know, information that you need, we'll help you out there. Okay. Um, oh, do you see my question above Linda? I don't know. There's a lot of questions in here. Let me see if I can find it. Do, do, do. I don't, Linda, if you want me to answer a question, you're gonna have to post it again. Sorry. This goes pretty fast. Oh, Caitlin put the email address. So if you have questions about anything, for sure go to customer care at jamierayvintage.com because Caitlin is awesome. If she doesn't know, she'll get to me and she's really quick about it. Usually in 24 hours or less, you'll have a response. She's kind of a workhorse. She responds pretty quickly. 
if she had if, if there's a delay in her response it's probably because she's messaged me and i haven't gone back to her right away just depending on what i got going on all right linda i'm watching for your question anna if you have downloads but still not the bird chances are that you may this is a really common problem people will sign in and pay under one gmail account and then they log in under another and they don't realize they've done that because you can actually log into YouTube under a Gmail account even if it's not your regular watching account. So double check in there and, and maybe that's the problem. So Caitlin might be able to help you more with that. But that has that, like every time we've had somebody have that problem, it's because they signed up under one account and they're logged in under another. So hopefully that helps. Um, All right, so dry. real quick. It got crackly because we hit the wet paint with the uh, the blow dryer. You can kind of see the crackle there. That, if we'd have let it air dry, it wouldn't have done that. So well, kind of- like crackle. Yeah, we like crackle, so we're, we're gonna run with that. It started crackling and I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going with it. Um, there goes a the drawer. And another one. All right, stop holding it like that. <laughs> I'm trying to show you the top. I lost all the drawers. All right, so there's the top there. And then sides, this one, you can kind of see the subtle blending there, but we're going to now do white on it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do some white. Um, Cheryl At Atkinson, send me a PM on my Facebook page, Jamie Ray Vintage with pictures, and I'll see if I can help you. Or email Caitlin at customercare at jamierayvintage.com. I can't always help people because sometimes it's hard not to be there. The thing about blow drying it and getting the crackle and the DIY paint is it's larger crackle, whereas milk paint, you're going to get the large and the small. So and the chipping. And the chipping. Like this probably won't chip up. Here. No, but that's good crackle. Yep. I like it. Jamie, like it, the crackle. All right, can you find me a French round that I'll just wipe this one off. I just okay. want to do some. Just going to go light with it. I'm just going to do some white. Um, in this part here. Did you get all these questions? I think I did. You can go through. You can ask. <laughs> well, then you might answer something I already answered, but. Yeah. I'm I tried. Gonna... Linda had a question. If you see somebody named Linda answering, I missed it somehow and she put it in all caps, but I, that I missed it, but I didn't see the actual question. So. Watch uh, Linda Carruthers found two bookshelves and one metal table. How would you paint the metal table? With paint. You can, so all the paints we use stick to metal really well, so. With milk paint, you need to add bond. Yeah, it helps it stick a lot. If you don't add the, the uh, extra bond to the milk paint, what will happen is you can get like huge chunks that just flake off. We're going to be stripping and painting some metal um, milk paint, milk, what are they? What are they called? The milk cans? So maybe watch out for that video and we'll have some tips on there on how to paint that. So I'm just adding back some white in here. And then we'll be ready to do some stamping. Are and you gonna spray that white? What? So, no, no, no. I so just... if people are just joining, run them, run them, break it down. Cause you painted that so fast. So break it down what you did. Okay, so the base coat was white swan, which is great because now that it's crackled, you can see the white through. Yeah. And then I did a real quick coat of Farm Fresh and then I came back and highlighted all the drawers with purple. And then I brought the brush back over that I painted the farm fresh with to kind of blend that back in there. The purple was French millinery. Yeah. It's kind of a light lavender color. And now I'm just dries. taking and highlighting. I'm just doing a little two-toning with this vintage linen here to bring out some of the details. And then we're gonna stamp it. And you sprayed it with water yeah, too, Yeah, I sprayed right? it with water. That helped blend it. And then they, if they want to see the whole thing, they could probably Yeah, they can go watch the replay. The video. But I was talking a lot, and you were you really raced through that. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie best. doesn't know how to paint slow. She's like, let's make this a four-minute well, video. people don't want to watch me paint for 40 years. It's a little tiny thing. Okay, so I've got my white on there. I think that's good. I just wanted to offset some of the color here. All right, let's go ahead and stamp these drawers. Let's lay this on its back. Okay. And stamp these drawers, and then what? So we paint it with the drawers so that the blending is continuous. We paint it with the drawers in, and you saw they fell out. Sometimes they don't fall out. Sometimes you gotta get like a putty knife or something and go in between the drawers and just break the paint line there, and then they come right out. Yeah, so do you wanna bring this camera down so they can see yes. you stamping? And then I'm okay. gonna kinda dry brush this base here. 
with this. Are we going to stamp with ink or paint? What ink. color do you want? Let's go black. All right. Okay, uh, so. Uh, dry brushing is I'm just taking this paintbrush that I just used and almost most, I'll come back and just add strokes to just kind of smooth it out. Okay, so these are our stamps. These are the backers for knobs. And we're going to put these where the knob, the holes for the knobs are there. And which one do you think on this, Jamie? They're all, they oh, all would work um, well. I think a smaller one. I think one of the smaller ones would do good. Yeah, uh, what's the smallest one? Are we going to do all of them? No, I was going to do every drawer that, that has a knob. So I'm thinking let's do this one with the leaves and then this one with the leaves and then do on these ones, let's just do a, a knob topper stamp. Knob so we'll do stamp. a back plate right here. And I like this one with the leaves, right? Because it's a big drawer. Okay. And then on these, we'll just do knob topper stamps just around that area. Okay, so this one here is the one you wanted, right? Yeah. I'm just dry brushing, guys. I'm trying to blend in some of this white here. It's been a little while since we've used stamps. When they're first new, these ones have already been seasoned, but when they're first new so that the rubber has something to hold the paint onto it, you just get like a 220 fine sandpaper and just really, really lightly go over it. And that'll get all the mold stuff off of there from when it was manufactured the and, molds, and hold, like, like the release stuff. Like it, the gives, it gives stuff. it a tooth, so it has something to stick to. Yep. So when you say mold, I think of that green stuff that grows in your shower. No, not mold. Like mold like what you cast in. Moldings. <laughs> All right, where's okay. a backer plate? Need a backer plate. Okay, so these are the flexi mounts and we got paint all over them. We're making a mess as usual. As per usual. Sorry guys. One of these days we'll have a big recording studio and it'll all just be laid out and we won't have to. When we hit 5,000 channel members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gold. Hashtag, everybody's got goals, right? For now, you get to watch us in the kitchen every day and make a big old mess of it. But on a fun note, we are cruising towards 100,000. We should hit that in Sorry, about. Sorry, I got to dry brush this. I just have to. Just dry brushing I it just with have white. To, but it, it's just going to help blend. Jamie that. can never leave something the color. She always has to either white wax it or dry brush white it's over it. It's my jam, okay? All right. Hold on. And you can, it's so, like, dry brushing is practically all the way is dry. I'm straighten this up on All right, well, camera. let's put this so the top doesn't flop open. All right. All right, so the thing about dry brushing is it's, it's already dry, like, and it also brings out some of this crackle detail, which is kind of fun. All right. Dry brushing hides a multitude of blending sins, just in case you were wondering. Where did the stamp pad go? Here we are. I like it a lot. All right, so this is just one of the Iron Orchid Design stamp pads. They come not loaded. We also sell the ink on our website, jamierayvintage.com. And all you do to load them is you just run that ink on there. And this is good for getting a really crisp, nice, neat stamp. Can you guys see what I'm doing okay there? Hang on, I'm gonna make a little more room. Yeah, and we haven't had the ink pads very long, so we haven't actually done a video using them. So yep. we're excited to use them. I used them yesterday on my commercial that I did for hoops, and it was kind of fun. All right, so I'm just loading up this stamp. If you want real, the paint is great for stamping, but if you want like a really nice, crisp design, from the stamp, because they have a ton of detail on these stamps, the ink is the way to go. Okay. Here, let me, I need to move all this. Okay. All right. Take that. Got it. <laughs> all right, I'm just, I'm just, leave that open a little. I'm just gonna come touch up this lip here. I am just trying to get them a good angle so they can see good. I'm just hopefully, touching up the lip of it. Hopefully the picture doesn't zone out because they've been saying it's been having a problem when we come close to it. Is it are you, today they've been saying that? Yeah. Oh. Got fuzzy. Okay. Let, me, let me check the iPad. Check the iPad. Does it look okay? Yeah, it's looking all right. Okay. But now I don't know where I went with my backer. Right. Did right. you move it over there? No, it's right, oh, it's right here. It's right here. Lost it on the towel. All right, let's see. Zeb is suffering from a cold, so you guys... We're in rough shape. 
Jamie gave it to me, and she's been a week and a half and barely starting to get over it, and I'm like well, four was, days in. You were starting to feel bad for a week, but it was like you're fighting it off, fighting it off, and then your body was like, all right. We spend way too much time together to not share germs. And it's okay if one side of your paint blending doesn't match the other side, because guess what? You can't sign unless you're like a superhero. So one of the techniques Ooh. that I'm, oh, that turned out cool. All right, show them. I'm gonna flip it and show them. Close. Boom, baby. It's so good. Once we get the knob in there, that's gonna look awesome. I'm wondering. Now, what one did you want me to do on the rest okay, of these? Okay, I gotta find the, the knob. You have a little more open time with the, the ink too. It doesn't dry out as fast. So let's do this one. This okay, will you wanna frame do Frame out the knob nicely. Okay. So just gonna put this back on the... So that was the back plate stamp and now we're switching out to the knob topper stamp. These are made to go on top of knobs, but instead of going on top of knobs, we're using it around where the knobs will go in. So I'm just taking the stamp pad that's got the ink on it here and going over the top of the stamp. And eyeballing it hopefully and the cool thing about using the black ink is when i come back in distress the base coat of this underneath is black so it's going to tie the whole look together when you're designing something think about the layers as a whole and what it started out as and that will help you keep a design consistent we probably should have started at the top and worked our way down so we didn't smear it it's a good thing zeb's doing this he has a much steadier hand than i am than i am than i have And I hope you guys can see up close enough, like how well that just that quick, simple blending did. It was not complicated. And the biggest part is I'm not a perfectionist, so that helps. <laughs> we'll get back to questions in just a sec here, guys. I know, I'm so excited. That I see all awesome. the comments flying over here on the iPad every time I reload with the ink. I should be answering them, but I'm excited to just watch what you're doing. This is my whole purpose here today was to answer questions and stamp. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd probably go put my pajamas back on and go get in bed. Which is on the agenda today. All right, that looks amazing. Now, the one that we saw on our page had stamps all over and that was cool, but I wanted something a little bit more streamlined because this is kind of my style. Okay, can you guys see all that detail pretty well there? And the crackle and the blending. So let me get a damn rag and we'll do a little bit of wet dressing. Okay, we're going to pull the camera back. I'm going to all over sanding just to smooth it out a little bit and then we'll wet the stress and then we can even clear wax. Jamie, I have a block. You have a block? Yep, I oh. have a block. Okay, so. All right, sorry guys, going to move the camera here. So I'm just lightly going over it with 220. This is not real wood, so I'm trying to be careful not to get down to the MDF. I feel like I just wiped paint on my nose. And all I'm doing here is just kind of smoothing out my brush strokes. And, and using the squirt bottle does help smooth out a lot of brush strokes too. Reasons my house is always dusty. And I'm just going to sand on the edges of this because that ink is still wet. It is a little blurry. Oh. Hopefully when it uploads, it's not blurry anymore. Sorry, right, guys. Sorry. We tried to use, so I don't, it's cloudy and overcast today. I don't know why the Wi-Fi is not working great, but we're on LTE right now, so. All right, so let's use a lint-free rag. Do I have one clean? All right, so you're going to have to answer questions. I'm going to go grab a rag, and we'll do some wet and then we'll be ready to... All right, we're a little clearer. I'm gonna try to show you now. Sorry about the blurriness. Hopefully you guys can see that. We'll make sure we have really good pictures of this in community post later this afternoon when it's all sealed up and ready to go. Okay, let me. So Jamie got some sanding done on it. Okay, so. 
damp rag. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling back. This paint is water soluble. Oh yeah, it's still blurry. Sorry guys, I, I can't fix that on my end. <laughs> oh, sorry. This paint is water soluble and so I can peel back the layers just by using a damp rag. And if I push hard enough, I can get all the way back to the black a little bit. So question from Vintage Sin, how much would you sell that for? So we bought it for $5 at the thrift store. I'm gonna ask probably at least 30 or $40. It's got a lot of work put into it. Yeah. Because it's an artisan finish, it's a very small project, but it's also got a great artisan finish on it. You have a spot right here where you got some brush stroke. That's one of the nice thing about the wet distress is it really blends anything that looks like a brush stroke when you dry brush back into the finish. I want this to look like an old French relic. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. All right. I need some more water on this. There's lots of coats of paint. Maddox Braden Brandenburger, sorry. I closed out and came back in. It's not blurry at all now. Good, yeah. good to know. So when we up, like when I'm looking at it on the uh, the phone here that's recording, it looks great, but it is a little fuzzy. So I'm hoping once it uploads, if you guys want to watch the replay, you can zoom to 40 minutes or whatever, and it's like hopefully it won't be blurry. That should be up in about an hour or so on the on the channel. All right. I, don't, I want to show them close up, but part of me is like, I don't want to blur it out. All I'm doing is just pulling back the layers of color that I put on here. And some of the black is peeking through, which is kind of fun. There must be a lot of people live on YouTube right now. Usually when that happens, they, uh, the servers have issues and our live stream doesn't go well. All right. Hey, Zeb, you want to grab out the clear wax? Yes, I already have it out. Okay, so what will happen when we clear wax this piece is that the colors are going to get vibrant again, which is kind of fun. And we painted the back white, and we'll leave it that way. Do you want to Just, sand that a little more? Though? Yeah, once, once we're done, I'll come back and clean it up. Maybe and we'll get we'll that with the orbital. See how the drawers are all messy? We'll clean those up. When we're done, we will take all the drawers out and get all the paint off. So don't worry. Yeah, Jamie rarely needs a gym. She usually gets a workout every time she paints a piece. Just good cardio. <laughs> I have ADD, guys. I got to go fast. Interest. Okay, do you want to wax like the front here? Yep. And show them. Get kind of dark. And then it'll lighten up as the wax cures. This is pretty. I like it. I didn't do a ton of distressing just because there's so much layering on here. I didn't really feel like I needed to. We'll see how this sells. If it sells well, then we'll probably be thrifting more of these. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's just fun to do. It's a little project. I mean, we've been, aside from spraying it white earlier, we've only been working on it about 40 minutes. If you don't count dry time, it's probably only been about half an hour. And we could have totally brushed the white paint. We were just in a hurry, and so we just sprayed the base coat on. And it also gave me a nice, thin, smooth base coat to start with. So this is just DIY clear wax. Usually you want to wait about 24 hours to buff did you, it. Did you wax the top of this yet? Oh, not yet. All right, I got to fix that. You, you want to wait about 24 hours to buff it so it can get nice and dry. Okay, sorry. And then once you buff it, it'll cure really hard over the next few days. And you can do several coats like that of the uh, alternating, the buffing, rewaxing, buffing, rewaxing. And if you do about three coats, it'll get really durable and you won't have to worry if it's a heavy use piece, you typically don't have to re-wax it ever again. And we could have totally just sealed this with a liquid sealer. I think it would have been fine, but I love wax. I think it's really pretty and it does cure. And people talk about, oh, you have to re-wax it. You're not gonna have to re-wax this piece. Once that paint cures, it is not coming off. All right, hopefully not blurry. I'm gonna try to get close. Oh, you it wanna seems... put the knobs on it? Yeah, I will in just a second. It seems like when we get close is when it gets blurry.
And we went ahead and we chose not to paint the inside that opens up just because we thought it would have been a hot mess. You might want to, if this was your piece, paint this inside. We've got a little bit of paint kind of all over the edge. See how it's kind of messy right there? Once this is dry, we will take a damp rag since it's not sealed on the inside and we will clean all of that paint off and make it look nice and pretty. And since it's not sealed in there, that paint wipes yeah, off really well. Yeah, if you well. just use a damp rag, you can wipe it off because it's not sealed. I'm going to glue these in later, but just so we can show you. Oh, we got paint down in the holes. <laughs> they might not need glue. Yeah, once that clay paint dries, <laughs> they may not come out. So these knobs just press in and they had a little bit of glue on them. I had to wrap them in a paper towel and then grab them out with pliers. Somebody was talking about taxes. We do not give tax advice. <laughs> no, no tax advice from us. All right, there we go. Let me see the knobs on it. Oh yeah, I like that. There you go, guys. Finished product. We'll leave it at that. We'll buff it in a few hours. Probably tomorrow we'll wax it again and give it one more buff and get it handled a lot by opening all these little drawers. But there you have it. And that just... I, Minimal, like I dipped the wax brush twice and it was covered. <laughs> and the blending turned out pretty good. All right, run them real quick before we go. Tell them all the paint colors you used again. All right, so here's the paint products that we used on this. We've got White Swan. I actually used Vintage Linen too, the wrong paint color. And then we've got French Millinery Farm Fresh. Then we used the back plate stamp and the knob topper stamp on it. We sealed it with clear wax. And then we also, on our fork and spoon that you saw us use, we use sweet water. We'll get those finished up later. And we use vintage linen on those candlesticks. I'll put a completed picture of all these projects on community later this afternoon so that way you guys can see it. Be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. 